thought today I'd add something to my fuck it list. And for the uninitiated, a fuck it list is like the opposite of a bucket list. So a bucket list is a list of things that you want to experience before you die. And a fuck it list is a list of things that you never want to experience again. And the thing that I want to put on this list today is Donald Trump's re-election campaign. I mean, it's terrifying, isn't it? The very idea that we're even talking about a longer term of office for this horrific administration. But the launch happened a couple of days ago. Donald Trump started out by laying into his Democratic opponents for being driven, he said, by hatred, prejudice and rage, said the blustering, sweaty white supremacist. Um, I think maybe hatred, prejudice and rage is just his version of eat, pray, love. He's like got them in sort of Ikea lettering above the fireplace. Um, he then went on to say what his two big pledges were. He promised that if he was re-elected, he would put an American astronaut on Mars and find a cure for AIDS. And this is absolutely encapsulates the problem with this individual, because those are not thought out, considered policies with some sort of strategy behind them. They are just the sort of things that four-year-olds say in the playground when you ask them what they want to be when they grow up. Like, I want to make ice cream and be taller than mummy. It's not, they're not considered political pledges. So first of all, putting an astronaut on Mars, um, this is achievable. We know how to do it. It would cost about half a trillion dollars by most estimates. Um, so where's that money coming from? What is What programs are being defunded? Who is being taxed more? How does this money magically appear? That doesn't make sense. Secondly, the main reason that the various sort of projects that have been started with this goal in mind haven't gone ahead is because of the risk to the individual or individuals that we send to Mars. So it's about 200 days, the journey, um, depending on the alignment of the planets at the time that you launch it. And all the evidence suggests that leaving people in sort of a, an isolated situation um, in a, a confined space for an extended period of time causes serious, serious mental health problems. If if you don't believe that it is absolutely a terrifying thing to do, just watch Big Brother, any episode, and you'll realise that after about a week enclosed in a confined space, people will start shouting racist things at each other and having unprotected sex in a hot tub. Um, it's pretty clearly evidenced. On top of that, there's the physical health issues. The journey from the Earth to Mars would expose an individual to about 15 times what is considered a dangerous level of radiation. So, like, presumably you would hope to get from this mission the sort of feel-good moment of somebody stepping off of a craft and planting an American flag and it being televised and, you know, waving to people back home and all that kind of stuff. Because there's no point from a scientific point of view. From a scientific point of view, we can learn everything that we want to learn by sending an unmanned craft to take samples, photographs, perform experiments. All of that stuff can be done without putting human lives at risk. And you wouldn't even get that feel-good moment. What you'd get is somebody exhausted, shattered, miserable as all hell, crawling off of a craft, going, you know, one small step for man. Why are we doing this? This is awful. Please take me home. I feel like I'm dying. Um, so it's a terrible idea. And then secondly, he wants to find a cure for AIDS, which suggests that he doesn't understand about the medical condition and about the current state of medical knowledge and what's going on around HIV and AIDS. Um, and I'm not a doctor, but even I know this, right? HIV is no longer considered a life ending condition. It's a long-term manageable condition these days. As long as people have access to the right drugs, it's considered totally manageable. And if it's being correctly managed with the right drugs, people who have HIV are not at risk of transmitting it on to other people. You can also be vaccinated against it if you think you are at risk by taking um, like precautionary drugs that, that prevent you being at risk of it. And also, if you think you have been exposed, you can go very quickly to a medical centre and get drugs that will prevent it from uh, for you from catching it. So we actually already have the solution to HIV, like manage it for those people who've got it and prevent it spreading. We could absolutely wipe that illness out in a generation if these drugs were widely available and affordable. And the reason they're not is because of Donald Trump protecting the pharmaceutical companies and because of global inequality driven by runaway capitalism promoted by Donald Trump. There is also, there is also some evidence that some people have been cured 
of HIV and those are people who've had HIV and then they've gone on to develop leukemia and the treatment for leukemia has so aggressively wiped out their immune system and they've had a bone marrow transplant and that appears to have effectively gotten rid of the disease but the thing is that you would never choose that option because the treatment that wipes out your immune system is so dangerous. I mean, you're, you're, there's a serious risk of dying from it anyway and has so many long-term side effects that even if that was an effective cure for HIV and we don't really know yet whether it is or not, you still wouldn't choose it. You would choose the long-term management situation. So all of this shows that he doesn't even really understand the but he hasn't spoken to medical professionals, professionals or scientific researchers about whether this is a viable, achievable goal. He's just waving a wet, pokey little finger in the air and saying things that he thinks sound cool. Um, oh, I'm gonna ride a jetpack to the moon. No, you're not, mate. It's just not gonna work out like that. This is not policy. This is just pointless bluster and ego. But there is one more thing he said, which I would argue is even more terrifying. He was talking about Hillary Clinton's deleted emails, and he suggested that if he deleted emails, he would be sent to the electric chair, which is weird because he's deleted loads of tweets and he's fired people who seem to be investigating him and people who have whistleblown have been in, I mean, the idea that he wouldn't get away with it is just an absolute nonsense. But in the middle of all this, he said, imagine if I deleted an email. For example, a love note to Melania. <gasps> oh, like, those are the five words you least ever want to hear Donald Trump say, right? That's just, uh, he writes love notes to, I mean, I'm not sure. But does he make a mixtapes as well? That's creepy, isn't it? Remember to push the little tabs out in the corner with the cassette so she can't copy over it. If you're under 35, I'd like to apologize for that completely incomprehensible reference. Um, what on earth does he say? So I've had a go. I've had a go at writing a love note from Donald Trump to Melania. <clears throat> My love for you is everywhere, like fake news. I want to shower you with golden gifts. I love you almost as much as I love my daughter. I want to run my tiny hands all over you. I want to invade you like Iran. I want to separate your legs like a Mexican family at the border. Coffee? Here's a fact. The only love note Donald Trump has ever written to Melania is called a check. See you next time. <laughs>